in how excited we are about you guys being able to head down to Australia for download. So I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about how this has all come about and how you feel about playing in Download Australia. Yeah, it's all really exciting because um, up until now, like, we've got a bunch of, bunch of tours in Australia. There's only you know, little club shows and things. And, you know, we keep coming around every couple of years. And it's nice. There's like a thousand people a night, whatever. And it's cool party time. But it's like festivals are just such a different vibe. And it's, it's just so cool that we got the invite to come to the Download Festival because it's, you know, the music we play, it's just, it's, just, it's like it was designed for big old outdoor midsummer festivals and things. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to come out there, we're going to play a bunch of cool songs, and everyone's going to get drunk and have a great time. <laughs> you mentioned that the vibe is different at a festival. Tell us a little bit about how different it is for a band to play at a festival rather than a headline gig. I think, I mean, the headline gigs, the main thing is that the people that come are definitely more uh, hardcore fans, the people who love all your shit. So you, you get a lot of people. Obviously, everyone sings along to everything. They love all the obscure songs and things. But um, at, uh, at festivals, where it's just a lot more casual, you know, the, the, the kind of fans that come, they're not necessarily going to be Aylstorm fans. They'll be fans of all the other bands, whatever. And I think it's, because, you know, it's, it's a festival, it's, it's like a big, big event. So people think that it's a much better time to just really let loose and have a big party. Just some real dumb stuff happens, and it's always great fun. And, you know, it's, and it, it, there's nothing quite like seeing a huge crowd of people, like, you know, 10,000, whatever, I don't know, just singing along to a song that you do. It's like it's such a cool feeling, and, you know, especially as being sort of, basically we're a party band. Yeah. And so it's like, we were designed to play outdoors in summer with a beer in your hand. So it's just going to be the best thing. Yeah. There's... The fact that there's people there that may never have heard your band before, does that kind of change what you play on the day? Like, do you try to go for the the tracks that might encourage people to become fans instead? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, we're not going to do any deep cuts or, like, weird, like, hey, this is a song that we made a demo of 17 years ago. Who wants to hear it? You know, none of that sort of stuff. But I think it's, it's kind of good that most of our songs at least the ones people like, and they're the kind of song that you know how it goes by the time you've heard half the chorus, you know, so it's, it's, it's the kind of music that it just, as soon as you hear it, you know, it, you can you can sing along and get involved. It's not, we don't play difficult music, I'll be honest, it's, we play dumb songs. So, um, yeah, but we definitely tailor the set list to be nothing but the absolute crowd-pleasing bangers, because that's what people want, you know, and we yep. need to make people happy. Now, a few years ago in Australia, we had our two biggest music festivals both go under. They both folded. Um, and it looked for a while like we weren't going to have festivals anymore, but now we do have our festivals back. How important are festivals to the music industry and to bands like Ailstorm? They, they, are, they are the most important thing. Like, you know, especially, I don't know about anywhere else in the world, but in Europe, you know, that European summer festival circuit is the most important thing that happens in metal every year. You know, like, oh, who's playing whack and who's playing grass ball? Who's headlining Hellfest? Oh, who's going to be, you know, it's, and it's just, it, it is the most important thing. Like, you know, because individually metal bands can't draw the biggest crowds, but when you stick a hundred of them together, it becomes this force like, to be reckoned with when like, there's like 60,000 people coming to to, to see these things so it's and it's like a massive thing it's like the, you know, the annual get together of just like minded people who want to see some you know good music yeah so it's, I think it's just the most important thing for the, for the whole genre really. yeah now you guys are, are a party band and we know that people at festivals kind of let loose what's the craziest thing that you have seen in the audience when you guys have been playing at a festival I mean Seen plenty of naked people, you know. A lot of a lot of inflatables is the uh, is the coolest thing. We're playing um, <coughs> so we're playing Bloodstock Festival uh, like in England like a year or two ago, and then we have got this giant duck on stage. It's like our thing, and then like the whole audience suddenly we were playing our set, and suddenly all these beach balls started appearing, like inflatable crocodiles and inflatable all this you know cool inflatables, and like the, the entire audience was this sea of pool inflatables. And at the very end, we threw our giant duck in as well. So it was just the, this, the most ridiculous sight you've ever seen. Just endless, inflatable nonsense. Like, possibly the least metal thing you can imagine. But it was so cool. Just, you know, all these dudes just 
having a having a great time and getting into the spirit of stupidity. <laughs> and, yeah, I love that. Dude. So what do you like at a festival? Are you someone who likes to go and check out other bands that are playing on the bill as well, or do you kind of just try to relax until you guys play? I, I love just walking around the festival site, you know, you know, just talking to random people, seeing all the crazy shit that's going there. Occasionally I watch bands, I mean, I, I don't, I think the kind of festivals we play, I don't really like most of the bands, but I think, uh, I might make an exception in Australia, I watch a couple of, a couple of cool bands, but I, I just love walking around and talking to people and getting drunk, it's just, you know, basically acting like you're a punter and just doing dumb shit, it's my favorite thing to do, it's, uh, just when the weather's nice, you know, just, you just walk around and relax. Yeah. Especially at festivals, we tend to play kind of mid-afternoon. Yeah, Compared yeah. Compared to like a club show. Well, like once, once we've done our show, everyone leaves, that's it, packed up, go home. But in Denver, we're playing like 3 p.m. or something. So yeah, we do a show, then we get off stage, and we've got like the whole day just to party and have fun. So we're going to make the most of it. Yeah. What's it like walking around backstage as well with all the other bands there? Like, do you find time to catch up with other bands that you're friends with? Or do you sometimes meet bands that you've respected for years? How does that work for you guys backstage? Uh, I've, I've got no friends. <laughs> I don't really, uh, I don't really go into the whole, you know, trying to smooth the famous people thing. I don't know if it's... Because I know I like being left alone <laughs> back there, so I'm sure all the other guys do too. So I would never really go up to something like, oh man, you're too bad, can I get a photo? Because, uh, so I just, you know, but it's kind of cool to go, oh, well, that's that guy from the television, or that's like the most famous man on earth. It's kind of cool seeing that these people just wandering around, but no part from that, you know. I just relax and enjoy the free alcohol mostly. Yeah. <laughs> now, it would be criminal to have you on the show today and not talk to you a little bit about your brand new album. Tell us a little bit about the new album and when we can expect to hear it here in Australia. Yes, The Curse of the Crystal Coconut. And it comes out on May the 29th, which is three months-ish, two and a half months, I don't know. And it's great. It's, I think it's basically a pop-punk album. <laughs> when it comes down to it, it's a pop-punk pop, pop, pop album with violins. So people are really get caught in heavy on the whole sort of just fuck you, don't care attitude. And it's just a party album, you know, really catchy sing-along songs is the main the main word of the day. And the occasional dips into unexpected weirdness. Yeah, it's, I think it's great. I think it's our, I think it's our best one. Yeah, yeah. 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 Awesome, I'm so excited to hear it. You guys tour so much. How do you find time to actually bunker down and, and record? When we're recording, yeah, we, we, always, we always conclude in January because not much, at least for us, not much goes on in January. It's a bit of a shitty month in Europe to tour because it's cold and wet and snow and stuff. So we are recording in January usually what we do. But when it comes to songwriting, writing songs is not a thing that takes a long time. You just... You, all it takes is to write five minutes a day, and an idea hits you, and then bang, you've got a song. Yeah. Well, at least in my experience, I don't know about other people. So it's, it's, uh, we find that, you know, we're like three years between albums, I just occasionally come up with cool ideas, and bang, a song appears. But then when we've got ten of them, we just head to the studio and record them, and start the whole crazy cycle all over again. Yeah. You mentioned that this is your best album so far. What do you think sets it apart from the other albums that you've done in the past? I mean, we, a lot of our albums are good. So sometimes I, I look back on our old ones and go, God, that was amazing. Stiller songs on that one. You know, there's, always like, there's always like maybe two or three absolute bangers. And then seven songs are like, yeah, I don't remember that one anymore. Do you? No. So, uh, but this time around, I, I don't even know what the most popular song is going to be. Everything is so cool and fun and exciting. I want everyone to hear all of it and I just want to, you know, it's just, I think it's non-stop great songs. Like, you know, like I had a, we had a really hard time deciding which songs are going to be, you know, the singles and the, the video tracks and what order to, you know, tease people with. Because I, I just want to make everyone hear the whole thing right now. It's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Will you be playing any of the new tracks while you're here in Australia? See, uh, that's the thing. I mean, um, we... It, it's a festival, it's, it's a party, and it's sort of like a very casual audience. And we don't really want to play any songs that nobody knows, because I know, like, in my experience, yep. going to a show, watching a band, you know, and they suddenly they play a song, and you're like, no, oh, I don't know that one. And then the mood sort of goes, hmm, everyone gets a bit bored. So we're just going to stick to 
a big hailstorm party bangers. But, you know, we'll be back in Australia doing a headline tour before you know it, playing all the hits and all the new stuff and something crazy. You know, it'll be good. Awesome, mate. Well, we cannot wait to see you. Um, I know that you're we're we running out of time very, very quickly, so I'll just quickly ask, is there anything you want to say to your Aussie fans before download? I just uh, want to tell everyone to you know, come on down and get drunk. Can you get beer? Can you get drunk at the same? Is this like one of these weird things where you can't drink? Can you get... <laughs> yeah, you must be able to drink. Yeah, get drunk and have a party. Come on. <laughs> awesome, mate. Well, thank you so much for chatting to us today. It's been an absolute pleasure, and we'll see you in Australia very, very soon. See you there, buddy. Cheers. All right, mate. Have a great day. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye.